Thank you for joining XR Om, which is India's first AR VR focused podcast. And today I'm delighted and honored to have with me Mr. Adipat Vidhi, who has been the creative product lead for virtual reality at Facebook Global and was tasked with exploring the creative potential of virtual reality for business. Alongside this, Adipat is part of the team developing the first immersive global medical school. So, Adipat, really appreciate you taking time and being part of the podcast. You've been part of the company which has kind of played a pivotal role in shaping not just the virtual reality industry per se itself, but also the metaverse, you know, because I, I, I don't see another company which is kind of catapulted uh, metaverse to where it is besides Facebook. So why don't we start with your journey, who you are, your background, and maybe your, your role at Facebook, and what made you resign from Facebook Meta? Firstly, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity. So yeah, great question. So just to give you a bit of a journey, it's uh, it's interesting, you know, when, when I was young, my parents were very much uh, architecture, medicine, or law, what do you want to do with your life? And I was like, you know, never wanted to do anything but creativity. So architecture was the path, but I've always wanted to write and make films. So kind of those two careers dovetailed. And I found myself going through interactive, immersive, transmedia, and I've landed out, you know, where I've done quite a few projects in this field over the last couple of decades. But, you know, by happenstance, I landed in this role as the creative product lead for VR um, globally. And it was essentially, you know, with the Oculus platform and what was happening at the time, how do you move some of that thinking? How do you look at the creative potential of immersive and the commercial impact it has? So I was privileged to talk to some amazing companies and really build that conduit between how they're operating now and where they might be able to go using immersive strategy and creativity. But I didn't really resign from Facebook, it was it was a contract. I had a job to do, and I did it, and it was great and successful. And you know, I think there's there's a lot of potential here. And my own curiosity in this subject has led me to sort of I, I want to set up my own thing. So I'm in the I'm in the midst of setting up my own joint venture, where we're really exploring this idea of you know what is the metaverse and what is its relevance, uh, you know, to the world at large. It's very exciting time, but I have to say one thing. You know, it, my main in- in all of this is around immersive storytelling for social impact. So that's my main driver. How do we really deliver impact through this immersive thinking and creating empathy that we do? Right. Yeah, I think we're in such a fantastic point of time in human history. We're just getting the glimpse of what's going to come next, you know, with this augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed gla- uh, these, these glasses and, and us moving from, uh, you know, a uh, uh, a standard 2D platform to a 3D world, Web 3.0, Metaverse. It's an exciting space. You mentioned that your core has been architecture and creativity. And we will get into how that is going to kind of upend with, you know, the Metaverse and virtual reality. But before we get into that, you know, Metaverse, you know, everybody's talking about, there's huge hype around that, you know. Why don't we, you know, start with kind of giving, I mean, explaining what Metaverse is to my audience. That's a good question. But no one really knows what the metaverse is. It's such a new and nascent possibility. We're all discovering. But if I was to offer a definition, I think there's two definitions. Like there's the one which is, I really believe the metaverse is like an evolving network of immersive environments, right? Which can be experienced either in real life, digitally or virtually. And that's where all the tech comes in. And we've got to bear in mind, from my point of view, that the, the metaverse is a toolkit. It's not a solution, it's a toolkit. And from that point of view, I think a simpler way of uh, expressing what the metaverse is, is to imagine it like it was a 3D website, you know, where your digital twin gets to walk around and have lots of different experiences. So that's how I describe the metaverse to other people, especially people who may not know what it is. And then you get more complicated as as you go through. It is a a hazy at this point in time. And and, and I I guess we're just kind of understanding what the layer of metaverse is going to be because i don't think it's going to be one single technology it's neither like us moving from 2d or 3d it's 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 i think everything together and and these convergence of technologies you know right for ar vr mr to blockchain to nft to 5g to uh, iot to artificial intelligence will possibly when it kind of binds together then we'll have like a working metaverse can you talk about you know the creative potential of virtual reality? How do you think it's going to impact us? Up till now, what we've been doing, and if we use even even with AR and other technologies, even now that I'm talking to you through a screen, everything that we do is or eight ninety percent of it is about third person 
passive engagement. Right, that's what we're doing. That if you can wrap a virtual world around you, that's a first person participatory experience. You are right in the center of it. And that's mind blowing in terms of the creative potentials that you, you can have because the experiences are not happening outside of you, they're happening around you, that you are the central character. And that has lots of implications for where we can apply creativity to deliver experiences and solutions for whether it's brands or entertainment or even you know uh, community level uh, uh, activations. We can really create and seed ideas that do this. They, they have no physics-based boundary. You know, there's no thing, such thing as time or distance. You know, you can sort of circumvent those, and essentially, you can create anything. You know, at, at the you know, edges of your imagination. So I think that's that's really really big in terms of what we'll be doing. Could, could you talk to us about some of the works that you have built at Facebook? And since you are really big on virtual reality for social impact, could you kind of like talk to us about that and maybe share some works built around that space? I don't want to just talk about Facebook because I've done quite a lot of work in this area in, in, in other areas. One of the things I'm very interested in is how you can feel objects in VR. So how do you use haptic technology to really enhance that experience that you have in VR? So we've got, um, there, there was a project that we did around, you know, how could you lift, for instance, um, something like a bike? And say it had a different frame, like a graphite or an aluminium frame. Can you feel the difference in VR? How can I viscerally give you that sense that you are riding a bike or being able to explode out the engine? And also that was a very exciting project because it led to a lot of clients wanting to deliver an end-to-end -end solution. Which is, so for instance, automotive brands. So a lot of these are under FDA, so I can't really mention who, but there's an automotive brand where the question was, could I buy a car? without taking my headset off and the answer is yes you know because you are you're collapsing that marketing funnel you know everything happens in this one ecology but so lots of projects like that and you know one there was an amazing project we did with a, a high street retailer where we volumetrically recreated the whole store uh, you go in you can pick up the objects you can look at them and we did a whole piece around sensorial marketing so if it's a fragrance how can i convey the sense of fragrance through vr Oh, so that you have this whole experience and you can literally click and it ends up on your doorstep in two days. So those are the kind of activations. But on the social impact side, at the moment, the main project that I'm working on, so we, there's, there's three that I've done. One was around the Syrian refugee experience. Uh, one is, it's actually coming up on, on Bhopal and what happened in Bhopal. But the main one is, is, the question was, could I eradicate forced marriages and honor crimes from the world using immersive storytelling. And that project was very much, you know, if you've ever watched, um, you know, 12 Years a Slave, the film, you know, it's it's very much like, great, we're talking about, you know, slavery in America and so forth. But when you map the social impact, there was a peak two weeks before and during the film, and then a peak when the Oscars came out. Well, what problem did they solve? What did they actually do to change the discourse, the ideology, the the, the view of you know slavery in America? And that's what I'm trying to ask with this project. How can I really create the, or break the boundaries between the content and the audience to create these visceral experiences that people want to go and do something about? So that's that's what I'm working on. Right. I, I think for the first time we are getting an opportunity to put the user into the content I, you know when we watch movies yeah, I, i'm such a cry baby you know i mean you, you feel the movie and my wifey is someone who's kind of like introduced me to the horror genre and when we watch this horror films you kind of like feel the chills and you know, you're like shit scared you know those, those bangs and stuff like that now the same thing if you put the user in the narrative that would be such a game changer you mentioned that you you have you've kind of experimented with haptics and volumetric though the, these technologies is still a little far away but i guess once it kind of starts becoming more practical more consumer ready and friendly i, I think the entire storytelling itself will be upended so i'm excited for that world where we narrate stories in a way where we we the end user is in the the content itself we are in the shift 
of you know the creator economy that we all talk about and it's an exciting space but there's a lot of haziness around it also people don't really know what that is or what it means for a content creator well it's, it's an interesting question because especially for film if we talk about entertainment it's a great promise to be in the content be a character within this film but that's there's two questions one what is the purpose of that and two to execute that and to create the sort of myriad solutions that you need is actually quite a big ask of the story however the question comes down to whether you are a passive you know uh, proponent or an active proponent of that content so if you watch something like traveling while black which was released where you sit and engage in a conversation and this world is opening up around you i think you can create that same visceral sense of engagement that you would if you were watching a film happening around you so i think that's the first phase that's where we're going to go so it's about one what is the story i want to tell how can i explore the story happening around me? the second is you know it's more of a game right it's how can i be part of this experience and i think the gamification of entertainment not 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 i'm not talking about actual games it would be great right if i could play assassin's creed in vr but i think filmic content there is something about you absorbing a story from other people's point of view so the connection is emotional it's more about empathy rather than about dynamic action because i think that's the realm of games Right, yeah, yeah, we're getting into the space where gamification of content and there was Bandersnatch, you know, uh, of uh, no. the, the Netflix Black Mirror series, you know, I, I think we, we just kind of seeing the first glimpses of where the future of, of content I- is going to go. W- would you like to talk about the content that you built, you know, you spoke about forced marriages and honor crime? Uh, so we've, as part of that, we have... Uh, a, an immersive theatre piece. Uh, we have a VR film, and we have a tentpole piece of content which is going to be a feature. Uh, but the reason there's a feature film is because right now, giving people, especially the production studios, uh, a multi-platform piece of entertainment is not something they know how to monetize, which is fair. So you need to create a tentpole thing and create a marketing vehicle around it. So the immersive theatre pieces very much around you know asking the different questions so i did a lot of research a lot of data gathering around what are people talking about what are the conversations that take place so i'll give you an example people are not interested in a victim from a victim's point of view they're interested in why these things happen why in this society is this allowed to happen so it's about you know understanding your audience is very important for uh, immersive filmmaking because it's all about the vantage point that you use right so we use that and we had for instance uh, created an environment in vr where you know we had spatial audio giving us sound and the idea was that you'd engage with the other people that were there in avatar form and actually write on the walls and you know create and really deliver an opportunity to build more resonance around what people thought and we use that to inform the storytelling for the immersive theatre piece that we did, which was very much around, um, uh, you know, how how do we really show people what it feels like to be in this culture, to feel this kind of emotion, and that was really powerful. So most of the content is built like that. Right. Today, there is a lot of friction when it comes to you know when when you're building AR VR content. You know, a it's expensive. There's the 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 distribution problem is there, monetization problem is, is there. Do you see that getting sorted? Absolutely. I mean, you know, when the internet first came about, when the first mobile phones came about, the same problems were there, right? So around monetization, distribution. At the moment, uh, we're just at the beginning. We're at PlayStation One phase, right, <laughs> of the evolution of this tech and this kind of thinking. Do you see a full length virtual reality film coming anytime soon? Uh, absolutely. I, like I said, you know, Traveling World Black was a great example of, you know, filmmaking at its finest. In a, well, in a 360 forum. I think that a full-length 360 film will come sooner than a full-length, you know, VR film. Because in VR, uh, it's like an animation. Right? I think the evolution of what Pixar are doing is probably going to go towards VR, where you can, you know, you, you can get up and move around in a space and actually experience the film around you. I think that's about five years away. Well, I think a, th- a full-length 360 is not that far away at all. 
what, what are you building next? You, you were very kind to introduce the medical school. So that's the that's the next thing um, is how do you build a global immersive medical school? How do I bring medical training to the world and you know deliver it to people around the world? Right. So the idea being that you could start and have a seminar in the morning from a leading, you know, sort of uh, a surgeon in Nepal to then somebody from the U.S. giving you, you know, some other training, but also that it becomes something that's ubiquitous, something that you can share, has the sort of you know values of personalization and you know clear understanding of how we go forward and do something that's meaningful. So that's that's the next project. I think we got into a world where collaboration is, is going to play a key role, you know, and this this virtual world, I believe, will kind of like, you know, take the borders away and, you know, where we all will, you know, break away from the silos and, and start collaborating. How important you, you think is the India market? Now you kind of in touch with anybody or creating partnerships, collaborations it's, over here? Yeah, oh, absolutely. We're in touch with a lot of partners, especially on the medical school side, but also... Uh, I think it's very important uh, that we break into markets and cre- if we are going to create a metaverse, which by definition should be open source and non-hierarchical, we need to take it away from the oligopoly that it is right now, which is like you know just owned by a few companies. We need people to hack that system because there's no such thing as a metaverse now. There's there may be such things as a metascape. Like somebody, you know, Roblox is a metascape or whatever. But until we have interoperability, until we have syndication of identity, until we have, you know, something that is ubiquitous and open source, and I think a civic institution, like if the India government were to take the lead and actually start mapping the world uh, and creating the metaverse, that's what we need. And I think it needs to start somewhere like India uh, so that we can have that sort of, you know, global presence. Because, you know, the other big thing about this is if you don't do that, what is this? It's just another marketing play or an ego play, right? It needs to be something that everyone can get into. And it's also about virtual, it's that real estate, because we're not replicating the real world, we're augmenting it. So all of this stuff's really important. And I think a place as vibrant and as culturally diverse as India is where something like this we could iron out all the problems and really create something better. right yeah there, there's so much opportunity for us put our effort together and shape the metaverse because so far i think all of the industries uh, or big tech have have been run by a handful and today we've got the opportunity to play a role in in shaping the metaverse because the ethos is that it's going to be interoperable decentralized you know and i don't see any companies in the world at this point of time which uh, you know offers interoperability or is decentralized so yes this this is a huge and open question and and I think that gives an opportunity for those young startups, for those dreamers to kind of shape a future or build the metaverse, which is beneficial for all. To to my listeners who are kind of, you know, who don't really know how to leverage this opportunity, don't really understand AR, VR, MR or, or, or creating content, what would be your advice to them? You know, where do they start from? Okay, so that's that's a very good question because my next what I really want to do after these projects have seeded is to find a way to create a global workforce around these skills. And everyone always starts with, oh, how do I learn the technology? How do I, what software do I learn? And actually, it's not about that. What we need to start with, there's three things we need to learn. But number one is creativity, right? How do we build ideas which are not contained? They are, you know, as imaginative as you can be. And that, that art of innovation and creativity is key. Second, yes, it's the tech. You know, what's going out there? Learn Unity, learn Spark, you know, learn how all these are various, uh, you know, learn how to mint NFTs, that kind of stuff. But then the third thing is very much about understanding the problems we're trying to solve. So it's almost like, you know, what does, how do you connect people? What, how do you break the barriers between content consumers, experiences, brands, right? And that's the skill. What what does that mean? It's not an advertising thing, it's not a marketing thing. It's a human connection thing. So almost there's there's a there's a thing here to learn around how you tell stories which are about connecting people. And that's the third skill. So for me, you know, 
we need a course like that anyway. I would advocate that, you know, actually India would be a great place for that as well. You know, set up a proper immersive course and get me to come and teach on it, by the way. And then, you know, um, but also start maybe, I, of course, start with Spark, but make sure you learn about the human part of this and the creative part of this as well. Right. I, I think you said something really profound, you know, ideas which are not contained, you know, because I guess we create, I mean, at least the, the you know, the people, the organizations, the parents, I, I, I think they, they, they create blocks, you know, as humans, I mean, you know, we live in a world which is free and we need to go beyond and that can only happen when you are you know not restricted or have blinkers you know it, it's so very important and you also touched upon you know learning continuously being lifelong learners i i think that the tech you need to kind of understand that it, it is going to play a pivotal role in in shaping of future and if you understand it and leverage it you will be creating a, a better future for yourself and creating stories which kind of connects with us the human connection i think that would be the key to getting into the future uh, and, and uh, so i'm super excited uh, for that space now uh, i, I want to also address the negatives of the metaverse you know because the social media itself has got you know lots of negatives you know and, and the, you, you, we could spend a day just talking about that, that you know today we uh, we we're getting into a world where possibly if we have these glasses you know which has inside outside tracking there'll be anything and everything that we are looking at is going to be collected by a specific company do we need to start having serious conversation on the negatives of this metaverse you know the positives are endless you know it can completely change the the, the world what are the negatives what a brand a consumer should be aware of so that they don't go towards that direction that's um it's an interesting question but i don't know if it's a relevant one there's obviously lots of negativity and we could talk about the specifics because the media is great at hyping up oh well what about cyber bullying in the metaverse and what if somebody was to uh, steal all our assets you know what about safety things have always existed the metaverse doesn't give you any new problems right it just it's just going to happen in the so when the when social media the same problem with but as i was saying before you know internet same problems so i think it's not just about looking at the positives but it's also being mindful of the fact that we're still experimenting so we need to allow ourselves to experiment and no of course some things won't work just because something doesn't work doesn't mean it's wrong just keep trying figure it out and yes you know be mindful you know you don't want to be hacked or whatever Although we've learned we, we're still learning our lessons from what's already happened in other environments Let's just make sure we apply them sensibly, but make sure we don't lose sight of, keep going forward, keep experimenting, keep learning, because it's new. And if we start to think about negatives now, in such a serious way, we will never know what the potential case is. How is the future of storytelling gonna look like? You know, for me, um, the future of the metaverse, that's a better question to answer, is like, I really think once the, the world is mapped in VR, um, you know, in, there's such great apps already like Wanda, you know, of, of the Oculus Store, where you can just walk around and sort of, you know, see the street where you were born and blah, blah, blah. But I think there's a real urgency towards, not urgency, progression towards getting the world mapped in VR so that we can have, you know, our own virtual real estate. And we use things that, you know, NFTs for me will be the building blocks of our virtual real estate right that's great and i think that's where the future will be so that for, for a brand for instance you can have a real life experience you can have a dot com experience or you can have a what i call a vcom experience right a virtual commerce experience and you go in and you create that and you have that so i think that's where the future of this is but in terms of storytelling you know this this notion of how can i you know like when i was doing the, the bbc stuff how can I break the barriers between me sitting in my comfortable chair in England and somebody going through a crisis situation in Syria? How do I really bring those two closer together? I think that's where the future of storytelling is, that we will not write linear stories uh, as much. It will be more about creating these thematic ecologies around 
what is the question we want to solve? How do we want to uh, really understand the way we feel about, I don't know, diversity? Then we have stories which will be co-creative, collaborative, and there will be just an open environment for that. I don't think we'll ever lose just being able to watch Netflix go to the cinema, blah, blah, blah. But I think there's going to be so much more opportunity for us all to be the creators of content within these different IP worlds. Right. Yeah, we're getting into such an exciting space. And I mean, there's this, uh, I'd seen this film called Giant. Uh, it okay. was a virtual ready 360 film. I, I don't know whether you're aware of it. Uh, okay. It it's it was shot uh, uh, in an underground bunker. There's this couple who who's standing and there's a war going outside. And the couple have a, a, a baby child who's playing with a toy. And then you can hear this forces coming closer and closer because, you know, all these, the guns and the missiles and, and, and the couple are, are hugging tight and, and they're trying to console the daughter who doesn't really understand what's going on because she's playing, but they are scared, they're nervous. And, and through the narrative, you know, you, the audio, it, it had the audio, you know, it can, it, it plays onto you like magic, you know, these guns firing, the sound coming closer and closer to you. And right towards the end, you go, you, you hear this loud missile going off and it lands and it goes dark, completely dark. And, and the reason I'm narrating the script, because when I saw the film, uh, my, I had got goosebumps, you know, because, and, and that's the potential of storytelling. And, and you mentioned, you know, I, I think we're looking at storytelling also in, in a way which is so unique. We, we are sitting in a point of time where we can create magic and, and that's where the opportunity is. You know, so really appreciate you taking time and being part of the podcast. Any last words to my listeners? No, I'm just very privileged to be here, and I, I, I agree with you. The potent, the future of storytelling is how we can change the world for the better. So I hope we can achieve that together. Lovely. Thank you, Adipad. Really appreciate you taking time and being part of the podcast. And to my listeners, if you like what you see in here, then please press the subscribe button. And until next time, see you guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Adipad. Really appreciate this. No problem.